sleep. Hey, boy, look. Did you know that five minutes this morning? Aye. She say sorry. She ran out of tea. Hang on a minute. Take the can back. Oh, Dad, can't I stay here for now? I'm going to be late for school. You wait till that leave off a bit, girl. Right, the teacher give you a larrapin. No. <laughs> but I've got to be there. I'm the monic dress. That's way of it, is it? She don't give nobody a larrapin, no matter what. She's the best governess we ever had. She's the best governess anybody ever had. She must be a bit of a change from the last one they had, then. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had any breakfast? <coughs> How could she get so wet coming such a little way? No, ma'am. That's a long way. They've been evicted. Why? Well, it's a tired cottage. And her dad's been laid off. Horse kicked him on the head. She's been staying with her auntie now. We've been shimpling. It up. What's the matter? Sir, there ain't much left out there. There won't be no more coming till next month. There'll be more coming tomorrow, or I want to know the reason why. Are you going to do as you're told? Yes, sir. Good God, next month they ought to be... Now, turn. See, we're working one and two. What do they pay? Oh, around 12 shillings a week. A bit more if you work with the office. When we were up in Wood Darling, they had a branch of the union there. And they got it pushed up to 12 and 6. Get it right. It's true. Get it, big now. 12 and 6? They all agree they wouldn't work for that. Of course, you can never get nothing like that going around here. Eh? We're all spread out. On George. And so are they, all spread out. Look, I didn't get started. Well, funny you should ask that. There was this chap. He used to ride around on a push bike in his spare time, chatting to him. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you, Mr. Garnham. Dropping to see you again sometime. Hey. class of person. And she's found I can't abide them. As for the husband, I have heard he was a socialist at one time. I suppose he thinks that by moving to a new area, he can live it down. In their chapels, they talk of meekness. They preach about humility. But when a man takes it upon himself to deny the authority of the ordained ministers of the church, to break away and to create sects and schisms. To claim that he alone will presume to interpret God's will and God's word with his own individual fallible mind. And we to regard that as meekness. Oh no. That is the very sin of spiritual pride that the Bible warns us to be on our guard against was our Lord himself who laid it down for our guidance that the disciple is not above his master nor the servant above his Lord. And so we come back to our text from the 28th chapter of Genesis. This is none other but the house of God and this is the gate of heaven. So, you're all going to write something about spring. But before you start, <coughs> what are some of the things that tell us that spring is on the way? Yes, Jack. Buds in the trees, ma'am. Yes, good. The buds opening. 
But I think we should say buds on the trees, don't you? The other buds, ma'am. The ones that fly. Oh, oh you mean birds. <laughs> say bird. Birds. <laughs> Have you seen Willie? He was here this morning. Has anyone seen Willie? Mr Fowler, come and fetch him playtime, sir. He's out there. Two different words, you see. Bird and bud. <coughs> come barging onto my land, blackguarding me in front of the lad. I've asked you three times before, as politely as I know how. I've written you a letter. Letter, be damned. Tell you where that went. Straight on the back of the fire. This boy is of school age. And the law says... The law says you're trespassing in my field. And you can clear off. I'm warning you now. Work has to be done when the land's ready. Any fool knows that. This boy is my pupil. And he hasn't been given permission to be absent. Permission? Jumped up foreigners coming in out of nowhere. Permission from you? <laughs> oh, I'll see you in hell first. Will he go back to your class? Oh, no, you don't. Mr. Fowler, for the last time, take your hands off. His parents have sent him to school and they've a right... His parents? His dad's one of my own men, for God's sake. I pay his wages and I put the roof over his head. And you're going to stand there and talk to me about his rights. Oh. What are you all staring at? Get back to work! Go up in there, I... Go on! You don't think I should have hit him, do you? No. I suppose this summons means there'll be a fine to pay. Sorry. Oh, Tom, it's not that. You know how the boys look up to you. I don't want that kind of hero for them. One who tries to settle things with his fists. Oh, that. Yes, that. My dear, I want all the same things you want. You know that. And all the same changes. There's only one thing you'll ever argue about. That's how to bring that about. But you never understand, Kitty. Is it your way would be fine if everyone was like you, but they're not. The whole system's based on force. Do you think people with power are going to hand it over just because we ask them nicely? No, I don't. It's people's hearts and minds we've got to change. It's the only hope. We'll never do that again, now, Every time there's a parish meeting, there's me on one side trying to get them to do something. And on the other side, there's a bunch of bloody farmers that don't give a tinker's cuss and a parson won't vote with them every time. No, it's all on his own, it seems to hit him. There's that rain on the way to Shimpling. Bit of steady rain and it's ten or twelve inches deep of water. Simple enough to put right. But will they do it? They got the rents on three cottages. Now they're supposed to be for repairs and improvements. What they do is they send that into Deadway District Council to help pay for the right. I'll never be bothered about. Now, uh, you're a good talker, Mr Higdon. Used to get on the parish council, there'd be two on us. And then maybe we could get things done. Waste of time. Do you say you wouldn't? Why do you say that? Uh, might be more than your job's worth. You see, you got kicked out of the last place. If you get their backs up again here, they'll run you out of the county. <laughs> Tell me, why is it all farmers on the parish council? Well, they all turn up with their friends, you see. Hoop each other on. No way ain't got on, though. Ah, well, he worked for himself, see. He got nothing to lose. Besides, he's related to half person. <laughs> <laughs> Did you go and vote last time? Wouldn't have done no good. Ah, 
And as many of you feel like that about it, I could stand till I was blue in the face. I wouldn't have a chance in hell. Ah, we come next to him. Do you asked us to, and we could fill the bloody hole. Would you run then? Like a shot. So, why do you say a waste of time? Because you were talking about getting one extra counselor on there. Complete waste of time. Two would still be outnumbered. If we can pack the meeting, we don't need to be fiddling around getting one extra voice on there. We can sweep the board. Gertie Sterner and Ethel Cummins. What happened to the one you had last winter? Gladys. <coughs> Bernardo's took her back. I see. I hear you gave a pair of boots to Mrs. Bryant's boy. Yes, I did. He had none at all. He couldn't come to school. Well, if there's going to be any more dishing out of boots, this one keep complaining has are too tight. It's not my fault. It's the one she come in. Come here, Gertie. Turn around. This child's infested. Well, she never come from us, then. No, of course not. There wouldn't have been time. But it's very unusual. I've never known Bernardo send out children with dirty hair before. Well, that'll be all. Thank you, Mrs. Philpott. Come with me, girls. Tom, can you take over for a few minutes? I'll be in the wash house if you need. 